more enduring than fear. Does after a certain point, the body starts to fall into fear? Numbness, nothingness. <clears throat> but with hope, you always have something to look forward to. You sound like you're speaking from experience. Some experience. Limited, but in my few, sh I mean, not too many years on this planet like some others. But yeah. Limited, but validating enough. That was a graphic when you said hope. Yeah. And you're, you pointed and you actually look. So, Bob, I am Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shouldn't have told that. Joe! <laughs> Joe! <laughs> jo. <laughs> but it doesn't, I mean, I, I get it. I, 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 in fact, I make fun of people too, saying, yes, the Catholic guilt, yeah. it's a real thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I, so, yeah, hope is... There's hope in the Catholic Church, too, to... <laughs> believe no right now I'm, uh, okay catholic is where, like i'm catholic by birth no. but i'd say i'm christian by religion just like okay. that's it no catholic no any protest nothing i actually walked away from religion um for about six years because i could see the fundamentalism taking over i i, I saw religious leaders diminish I said, the world does not need any more of that. We diminish ourselves through so many other ways. You know, where is the lift? It was actually something called the, the Gospel of Thomas. I don't know if you, anybody knows about the Gnostic Gospels. Yeah. And it actually isn't particularly Christian, right? In fact, the Christian church wiped it out. This whole notion of doubting Thomas, yeah. they, that, that, that didn't even exist. They, they created that story, destroyed the, the, the man's message. And what it was really about is seeing the beauty in your heart, every person's heart, regardless of their religion, is saying you're worthy and you're called to something beautiful. It could be a community spirit. You know, it doesn't have to be a traditional. You know, it could be the, the kids that need you to serve, to, to find the nobleness in your life and embrace it, right? So, yes? Can I just, because uh, I'm inspired, the last lines of the Gospel of Thomas are something to this effect. Heaven is spread around the world today, but men do not see it. Wow. Yeah. Don't wait for the end. <laughs> Enjoy the journey, right? That's the second catechism. It's like, we're here to, it actually says man, because when it was written, it was, that was a Christian way. Right? Uh, uh, our, I'll just say our, our chief role is to serve God, and people stop. They, they just say, sir, ah, work. I should, you know, if I'm not doing that, I should feel guilty, you know, I should do more of it. Should, 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 should. No shoulding. Because you can. You are powerful. You said power earlier. Power, power, you have power. Not just what's in you, but around you. You, you collectively have more power together. That's the dialogue that you have, the listening. It's, it, it's not just a gift, it's, it's also receiving. When you have insight about someone, then that's a gift to yourself. And you probably appreciate it. And Glad to be part of that process. If you see someone find joy in being able to communicate something really important to them, wow, joy isn't a fixed sum, right? You you share joy, it doubles. And sometimes it's exponential, right? You know, life isn't the number of moments of the day, it's the moments that take your breath away, right? The, the catching of the great ghost, the blissful moment, right? Uh, I'm just going to tell another story, but that's a little boring. About the. You like boring stories. Nah, nah, let me, let me, uh. uh how are you doing on time? We'd like to, we've got 20 minutes. You're just going to tell me about the six minutes, right? I am. Okay. 
uh, even if it's in the middle of a story, oh, I don't know how important it is to finish on time. So, we're pretty tight. <laughs> we're pretty tight. Hmm. Do you want one that's more... Okay, the church. Uh, you talk about a transformational moment. This is the one that's called Listening for the Thunder. Right? Ah, I can't tell this story without crying. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, okay, so I am 43 years old. I have had a successful career as part of a family business. I've been fired from that business, knocked to the lowest level. And then I started my own business, so back up, right? It's not enough. So I start microfinance, right? And I had some great mentors, one beside my mood. I'm glad to remember that actually, because he's coming to see me. And I want to embrace that memory. Um, I, there was a woman in a village in uh, Mirzapur, I think, if my memory serves me well, who was also my, someone that inspired me. So that's how it got me going in microfinance. Okay? I was trying to do both. Uh, very, and I was ambitious, you know, we were building buildings all over the United States. We were the eighth largest industrial developer in the United States, the only private the other seven were publicly traded, had all gone public. They were massive companies. And so we were just doing our little thing, you know, keeping up, slaying the dragon, right? Um, the microfinance, we were in 44 countries, okay? So you can imagine the travel with that. And I had young kids at home, and I missed them, and they missed me. Uh, they were seven, nine, and 11. Um, so I, I, I feel compelled to choose which career, one, right? I talked to my father, traditional that way, and he has been a monumental mentor to me. I talked to my wife, of course. Uh, I talked to my friends. I talked to my colleagues at work. What was the universal answer? Which career? Construction. Yes. Anybody want to know why? Or can you yes. tell me why? It was going well. You could have been, you know, it could have gone public. You would have made a lot of money. You're also in the U.S. with family. Yeah. It also honored my family tradition, mm -hmm. which is no small thing, as you know. Uh, honored her father. It was easy. It was socially acceptable. Uh, I, I had a certain amount of uh, prominence. Um, as a man that feeds the ego, you know, it's very achievement-oriented. Um, you feel useful. I call it building a home. It's not just a building. It's a home for business, right? We were experimenting with uh, natural light, how to get more natural light in these factories, you know, how to get more ventilation. You know, the South is hot. California can be hot. So it's like, how can we make this a more pleasant place to work, right? Well, I'm in church, okay, in the little lobby where they serve coffee and visitors come in, and uh, so a stranger comes up and introduces himself and says, well, you know, how do you like the church? And so I said something like, I like this church because. It says that service is more about what you do out in the world than what committee you are on in the church, right? You know, like, uh, do you pass the plate or, you know? Uh, and so he says, well, what is it you do out there in the world, right? And I take a breath and I'm just about to say real estate, right? And it was probably the male answer, I'm a big dog, I'm just admitting it. Big dog in real estate, right? That's so how I'm known. It's my identity. It was the convergence of all these things. And I tried to treat my people well. I tried to treat the people in that factory well, right? So I thought I was certain. You know, the property taxes that these buildings, 
it, there was one plant we built increased the flow of the property taxes by 40%, one factory. You know what that did to the education? Almost all of that money goes to education. Okay, so I felt like I was checking the boxes, right? The, the man asked this question, take a breath, and my 11-year-old daughter is right there with me, holding my hand, completely, I think, oblivious to this conversation, ready? Her head pops up, she goes, oh, he's in microfinance. He makes small handshake loans, mostly to women, in emerging markets, and the repayment rate is quite good. <laughs> So, I could have either of those two professions, right? Not a bad choice, either one, really. It is part of my identity, which one you choose. Which one do you think my daughter was most proud of? That's the father she um, admired, that she wanted to learn from, that she wanted it turns out she wanted to, to model. Some of you have met her yes. now, Kaplan, yeah. uh, has been living in Africa for six years, living a life of service, four years as a school teacher, learning education. Now, I don't know if you know, she's a storyteller. Yes. Right? She, she's a writer. She's writing on different leaders' journeys, right? And now she's actually working for a media to map these stories. Uh, and she's going to write a book. What, is, what do you call it? Tales from you? the Well. Or the Stories from the Well? Yes. And she's going to go back and forth between her own experience and the experience of a, another leader. So it's sort of a dance. Right? Oh my gosh, she's 26 years old. I, I couldn't have taught her did show her to follow your dream, right? Every day. You think, you don't think she's lonely? She's a big, tall, almost six feet, blonde, you know, she sticks out in Nairobi, Kenya, right? And she's so smart that many men are, I don't know if I should tell this story, it, it, you know, intimidated by her, okay? Let's just say it. And yeah, she's lonely, but. She's now learning to be at peace with herself. And so the convergence is more about what might a companion be for someone and how could she find out another way, right? Through yoga and friction, right? So uh, who knows? It's her journey, right? Um, her mother had a huge influence on her in education as well. So it's definitely it takes a village, right, um, to raise a child. Um, I actually had a, a Zoom call with uh, three of my kids at one time, and I just ended up sitting back <laughs> and listening to them encourage one another. My son is a, is a radical. He's replacing meat uh, on, on the diet. He's, he's growing mycelia, if you, if, you, if you know what that is. Um, uh, uh, Kathleen I've spoken of. Ali is a journalist and uh, waiting to get, uh, she's waiting on a Fulbright fellowship where she'd be uh, paired with National Geographic. And she would go to uh, get in a camper cover all of Australia and show the impact of climate change on the country and people. She says, Dad, statistics for global warming aren't working. We've got to tell stories. We've got to show people what they're doing. I mean, it's pointing a plastic bottle, but, uh, you know, uh, their lifestyle matters. The choices, you know, including the community that we love, right? The earth that we love. There's another storyteller. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> uh, so, hopefully I did something right when I chose that career. Uh, how are we doing? We got 
got uh, about uh, nine minutes. And so I got, I can, I can slip in one before the, before the love story. <laughs> uh, let's see. <coughs> okay, this might be practical for some of you. Uh, I call this, uh, what's the worst thing that can happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for the high seas, you know, there's only so much research. Turbulence is good. What's that? Turbulence is good. That's a place you came up with your free ass education. Turbulence? Turbulence is good. Yeah. Oh. Uh, this is where you have to choose hope rather than fear. Yes. You know, when you're on the boat and it's being tossed in a storm, it's natural. But it doesn't mean you have to choose. Sometimes just closing your eyes that fearful moment and having a memory of someone that loves you I actually did that before I spoke I'm an introvert so this is not normal for me this is a place to to serve rather than although I am enjoying it and I actually you're nodding your head it's a ton for me so uh, but I I was nervous and I closed my eyes right I had the grass between my toes I was listening to Sometimes it's a simple tool like that to get your way through the conservatives, right? Uh, sometimes your brain, there, there's an alpha wave versus a beta wave. This is, this is actually science. Anybody know brain neuroscience? Have you ever heard of alpha waves and beta waves? Yeah. You want to share? Can you share the alpha and the beta? Um. So when you're in the alpha state, your brain waves are such that you're very uh, awake. And when you're in the gamma state, uh, it is, um, you know, I don't know the difference actually, but I know of the gamma waves where that's the point where you go into deep reflection and many, many new synapses are created in your brain. The neurons are working. And many new connections happen when you're in a slightly deeper state. It's an awakened state, but at the same time, it is a very deep, reflective state. And that's when new ideas, new thoughts, new reflections happen. <coughs> so that's my limited knowledge. It's perfect. Uh, many of the things that you're talking about, dialogue, caring for each other, induce the alpha state. Typically, we, uh, it's embarrassing to have an alpha thought. It, it's a non-sequential way of experiencing life. Uh, it's a very hopeful state. Right? In fact, fear distorts it. It will pop you out uh, of alpha state very quickly. Um, it's extremely powerful. Some people say it's a spiritual state because it has, people believe, scientists believe, that it has no boundary between time or space. Yeah. So you can have a memory of a, a loved one, a memory of my father in that bookmobile, right? And when I'm trying to, you can't really effort alpha state, but just allow it, you know, and that memory comes back and it says, keep going. It's like the alchemist. If anybody has read that book, yeah. that people come out of the mist to, to help you along your journey. Um, just be aware enough to recognize it, right? I mean, this person might be there to help me. I could, it's a stranger. I could be afraid. And sometimes it does make sense to move that purse to the other side. You know, <laughs> to show a little discernment. This is why we call it gray matters, okay? <laughs> uh, gray, that goes the spirit of your head at the door when you're doing highly impactful work. You do run the numbers, right? You do projections. You do some what ifs, right? What if my entrepreneur gets scared? What if they stop believing in their, you know, okay, plan for that, right? How can we be sure that we're good partners? They'll sometimes 
finance does that, right? It's a language of uh, uh, engagement. So that wasn't the story that you, uh, what was the story? Oh, it was, yeah. I think we have time for the love story. Time for the love story? Okay. This story has three parts. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, let's see here. I failed in my first, I'll take responsibility, my first marriage. I uh, completely reinvented myself during the marriage, right? And it was what, part of what I'm saying is that change from real estate to microfinance have cost. I was no longer the man she married. Okay? Um, we're still actually close. And actually, she's coming to admire the man I've become. Uh, and actually, she's doing a lot of work in Sierra Leone in education and is now appreciating the work of international education. She, she, but anyway, I guess I didn't wait. <laughs> and so I started. Uh, we, marriage ended and I swore to myself I was going to take two years off, right? My kids said, you must put a break in between, learn how to live with yourself, learn, you know, what's important, date, enjoy, lots of women. Like, that sounds good, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it was 32 days later, someone asked me, to meet one of my neighbors to learn, like, where do you get your laundry done, right? What's the best grocery store? You know, these things to learn the neighborhood. Uh, that turned into a date. That moment, which ended up being nine hours <laughs> long, right? Uh, my favorite part was it was February 12th, and it was happened to be a warm day. It's wintertime in, in Atlanta. And so we went to the park. And we stretched out in the, in the sunlight. And she had on um, a pink cashmere sweater, right? Beautiful sweater, right? And she sat up. Anybody know what a sweet gum ball is? Okay, uh, pine cone, yep. yep. You know what a pine cone is? She had 32. Pine cones stuck to the back of that sweater, right? And I went, oh my gosh, here goes the day. It's just about to melt down, right? You know, this very nice sweater is possibly ruined, you know, whatever. I might get blamed for it. I don't know. I didn't know whether to take the sweet gum balls off or just tell her or what, what do I do? Okay, so um, that is the first chapter, okay? Is that the first chapter? Yes. What, what did you find you do? I, I mentioned it to her. I said, you got, you got sweet gum balls all over your back. She said, oh, well. You know, uh, <laughs> she took the sweater off and started pulling them off. I'm like, I like this woman. <laughs> she goes with the flow, you know. Um, okay, chapter two. It was only uh, 11 hours later. I was in a little delicatessen buying coffee, and I was about to go to church, and I said, well, I'm going to buy two cups of coffee. Belinda's house is just down the street. I'm just going to take her a cup of coffee, right? Another outrageous social boundary shattered, right? You know, I knock on the door, and she's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> Why didn't you call me first, right? But I'm like, oh, well, no, she didn't actually say that. She thought it. Right, you know? And I didn't know that I'd broken the social boundary until much later, right? And so I'd give her the cup of coffee. She's well, come inside, we'll sit, come back. 42 straight days, okay? We had a date, right? I was hopelessly in love, uh, right? I really was. I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her, okay? Uh, over the next two years, I asked her to marry me seven times, okay? Turned down every one. <laughs> every one! Oh, gee, you know? 
All right. So, chapter three. Okay. Uh, anybody ever heard of the Unreasonable Institute? Maybe in Boulder, Colorado. It's a it's a gathering of entrepreneurs from all over the world. And yes, sometimes we have to do the unreasonable thing, right? As entrepreneurs, something that has never been done before, and it is out of whack with society. Okay. So I'm there as a coach for three weeks. And I'm having the ball with these people, these young people. It's so hopeful, so inspirational, right? And you know, I'm staying up late at night, having conversations, another cup of tea, you know, going for ice cream, just talking, 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 and relating, hearing their stories. So I called Belinda up. I said, you got to come out here and meet these people. So she did. And... She started going out on her own and meeting um, some of these some of these women and uh, and men, but she loved hearing the women, particularly the, the tough stories where these women, one woman uh, had was fighting honor killings in Pakistan and had actually been run out of a village at the point of a machine gun, right? Had her office blown up, right? Very there to fight her husband, uh, not her husband, her father. She, she just huge, right? It was very close to me, having been killed herself, okay? So one day, Melinda comes bouncing in, and she goes, I get it, I get it. I, I, I Now I know why you do what you do, right? Actually, that's a convergence, isn't it? Let's work and partner, right? Didn't think of that. Um, so now there's starting to be like, a little bit of openness, right? <laughs> the last day, uh, this young man named Raphael, he has this idea of making an affordable home. And it's made from pieces. It's prefab. It's eight feet long by four feet by two feet. So it ships like a, like a little pallet, right? You can stack it eight high and just put it on a shipping container and build three-story home out of that. It's great for relief organizations, you know, build a home in three hours, would withstand 70 miles per hour. I always love, love the engineering of it, right? I, and, uh, so we're talking about that, and he says, yeah, at the end of this, I have to fly out to San Francisco and meet an investor. You can see his face fall. This is one of the most lovable men Mother just liked this, right? And I said, what's going on, Raphael? He goes, I'm scared. So I said, um, I'll go. Melinda happened to be sitting beside me. And she saw that happen. Two years later, when we finally marry, she tells that story. She says, that's what I'm talking about. That. That's the best. Yeah. stories uh, and more courage comes from sharing the most vulnerable moments in a person's life and it uh, it not only inspires other people but coming from the culture that I come from where I don't see men emoting and they are taught to stop emoting this was strength this was just pure strength and courage and uh, thank you for sharing that story with us but it's important that other men and women in the world see this I know that it doesn't matter what your gender is, you need to share those stories. And the most vulnerable moment you're not scared of sharing because that's where you found your own strength. My um, purpose in life is to have courage mm -hmm. and to be courage. And courage. And, and courage. each of your stories was just that. I'm going to do 
mind. That's gonna be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I just busted out. <laughs> well, I think from all your stories, the most important part was they came from love. Every story, every moment you, you shared with us, all the decisions you took them with your heart. Because you, in every moment or difficult decision or, or pivoting point of your life, you have all this reason clear and, and, and everything makes sense and everybody around makes sense. But you always choose what it makes sense to you and to your heart. And I think that's what makes you a very successful person in every sense of your life, you know, whatever success means to you. Because everything comes out of your love and it doesn't matter anything else. <laughs> Very romantic. Can we can we have the hug again, please? I have one. Are you okay? Or are you? Okay? Are we ready to move on? Yeah, I think. Move on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, should I look at this table too? Yes. Uh, we have. How are we doing, Joe? We should we should hear from one more, maybe. It's an even number, you okay? Yeah. <laughs> two or... Well, it's going to be okay. Two, two more. Or two. Oh, is that exercise? Uh, Ellie? I was most inspired uh, when you were talking about your daughter who lives in Africa. Because I closely relate to that uh, living in Mexico. And I keep following my heart to be there and I don't even know why I'm there and when you you shared when you had to choose between this profession you were going to do and then this microfinance I feel that way with Instituto I'm there but I know I'm valuable but I, I, I'm supposed to be this my family I'm sacrificing so much to be here and I'm constantly trying to choose that you know when I graduated college, I'm, I'm an artist. I'm a potter and a painter. And I remember once I was with my father who I cherish very much, He's my hero in my life. And he introduced me and he laughed and they're like, what, do you, what does your daughter do? And he, he's very funny and he's like, she makes pots. <laughs> and when I was home for Christmas and he introduced me and he talked about the work that I do in Mexico with the Instituto. She changes lives. And I, I felt so proud and so honored and, and like, wow, like my, my dad's proud of me. But I really saw that this is the choice that I make. And I consciously do it. And it's hard and courageous. And to hear you talk about it with your family, it's just so clear that the, the emotion it takes to do this, but that this story is, is my story, and to hear you tell your stories, it's just so inspiring, and thank you for sharing. Good? Uh, yeah. You want to say something? I, I make it short. 
I'll make it short. I think we all saw the heart and love immensely I relate to what everybody said. But I thought I also saw a beautiful mind behind all this. Right from the time you, you made sure that the way they were seated um, was so crafty. And um, looking at Joe every time to ensure that he's the director of the time. No, I really mean it. I mean, when the heart speaks, sometimes our mind is not um, there. But I think I saw the beautiful craft of how the heart and mind can converge, speaking about the convergence. I think it's inspirational. Thank you. Well, maybe I'll do this again sometime. You should. I thought about uh, being interviewed, you know, and I have someone in the moment said that they were responding in some way. You know, shape the next question. You know what I mean? Right. You know, if it takes down a path, right? Other than just what I think is, because I, I didn't know this. I, I didn't. This is really weird. Yeah, no, that was my path, right? That was what I was So, you know, I thought about a uh, journalist that could say, wow, you know, if you hold up a mirror, you know, get it on tape and see what it's worth, you know, it's, God, it is so horrible. It is so contrary to my father's message to me. When he handed over the, the family business. He's not Catholic, but it was, he said, you could go out and you could be the most, you could be an emperor here and hold yourself at the top of the mountain. And your ego could be like outrageous. But what I'm really intended here is a, a piece of paper and a whole lot of responsibility. It took me 15 years, and I still fall back to that message. You know, that I'm there only because he did that. And that's not even me, that's not even my gift to myself. It's, it's, it's gave it to me to, to be responsible. You're gonna make, are you making this an even number now? No. <laughs> I just want to say that I, I keep, I, I'm not sure if I understand everything or as, as you say, that I, I just keep, keep thinking about what you said that this guy didn't get back the money from your dad. And, and you ask what, what, what we think that that guy uh, did that. Yeah. And actually, though that he didn't that because because he wants and we be today here. I think mm -hmm. we are seated here today because it's, it's a consequence of that. That was the, the initiative that this guy has. So I, I don't know if I'm, I'm being so clear. However, I really think that what we are doing today with our companies is something very similar and it's a consequence of that. There, there's gonna be a lot of, of, of kids, maybe, or according with a business, business impact business that we are doing. There are gonna a lot of stories that they're gonna tell to their their people some some time in the future, and they're gonna say there was someone that helped me, or there was someone that that dedicated his life that, that they're doing. So maybe I'm sometime I'm gonna tell your his, your story, and I'm gonna say how you impact me. And I really hope that all the kids that my teachers are impacting too, that, 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 that's going to become a, a, a spread that is going to expand limitless in the, in the future. So I, I really, thanks to that guy, that, I, of course, thanks to your father, of course, thanks to you. And I really hope that many people in, 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 the, in the future, thanks all the story in the past for, for because it, it was a spread because, and, and a small action. And it's the entire thing is kind of when I'm, when I'm just hearing the stories. You gotta do a lot of stuff. You gotta do a lot.
<laughs> Those Colombians do a lot of kissing, be careful. <laughs> Alok should get a big round of applause because he was brave enough to get his new wife into this room. She must be thinking they're all mentally sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> Truly. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Folks, outstanding, no? Yes. Bob, well, thank you. Outstanding. No? Let's, let's, let's. I just discovered my purpose in life. You know, <laughs> at least for the next three months. It's telling stories. <laughs> <laughs>